All right. Hopefully this, hopefully it's good now. I'm hoping that I fixed the issue. So hopefully there's no lag. Um, hopefully, hopefully I got it to work again. Uh, let's see. All right, I think, I think it's good. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. <sighs> Whew. Technology is something. All right. Let me make sure that I'm live. <laughs> Uh, oh, YouTube. Hmm. All right. I should, I should be good now. I should be good. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. Hello. 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 Ah. Uh, I think it's better now. Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay. I hope so. I hope so. Um... I mean, this is, this is like my, my third live stream. Um, okay. Awesome. 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 All right. So, um, yeah. Whew. Technology. What can I say? All righty. So, um, all right. So, Hello, everyone. Welcome back again. I had technical issues in <laughs> the live stream. Um, and hello and welcome to everyone that is watching the replay. Hello. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, SM statement because they released this statement and uh, CBX's statement that they released through their legal representative in response. And I'm pretty sure SM is going to respond to that to CBX's response because SM, they always have to have the, the last word. Um, yeah, this is just very interesting. And, um, and I like that, uh, we're getting a bit more clarity in the whole situation and yeah. So I'm just going to wait a little bit, um, before I start reading the statements because they are pretty long. Um, Hold on a second. Let me put the new link on Twitter. Uh. All right. Um. Okay. Oh, also, did you guys see Sehun posted uh <laughs> posted on Instagram? I was waiting. I was waiting for him to post because you know. Uh, Sehun, he always has to post something when, when something crazy is going on, he just posts like a random picture on Instagram. Like life is still good y'all. I love him. And he also posted on bubble too. Oh my goodness. I love, I love how he's like low key unbothered, but it's like, Sehun is like, everything's good friends. Like, don't worry. Don't worry about EXO. Don't worry about us. We're, we're chilling. We, we have a plan. Um, I love it. I'm so happy that Sehun actually posted on Instagram. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so that should be... All right. All right. Hold on, is the audio good? I hope the audio is good. Okay, cool. Okie dokie. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start reading the, the statements. Um, <laughs> Sehun is baby still. He is, he is. And I like that it's him that like posts Ah, uh, poor Kai. When he comes back, he'll have to face a mess. Oh my goodness. He'll, he'll be like, you know that, that meme 
of like the guy walking in with like a box of pizza and it's like the whole room is on fire and he's like uh what did i just walk into yeah but i'm sure i wonder i'm pretty sure kai is probably um kai is probably aware of the news so he's probably in the military but he knows what's what's up like he's probably like oh geez of course this happens when i'm not there um hello i hope you're having a great day so far thank you i hope you have a fantastic day too um yeah it's a it's a a great time for xols <laughs> well i mean i trust exo and so uh i definitely agree that all the xos should just start their own label i mean i don't want them yeah like all of them together in one label yeah not like individually <laughs> can't believe this happened. I just started to stand EXO since last year in June 2022 and Chen is my bias. SM is not uh, good managing him after what he went through. A lot of hate when he got married. Oh my gosh. I know. I know, Anthony. Like, it's an interesting time to be an XOL. Um, congrats on being an XOL. It's so exciting. Um, yeah, no. SM is just terrible. Um, I mean, okay. I take that back. SM has good, good good things, right? I love that SM. They're able, they really differentiate each group and stuff. Um, but yeah, how they treated the whole situation with Chen and him getting married and stuff. I don't, I don't know why it was so hard for SM to like back, back up Chen. Like, and I'm happy that Chen, you know, he didn't, he didn't like leave or anything. He's still with EXO and like, like, I love Chen. Like, the man deserves the world. Like, he deserves all the support and, yeah. Or they can jump into <laughs> JJ's label. Wouldn't mind at all. I know. He he wants to, like, produce, um, like, his own groups, right? So he could just, like, get, get EXO. <laughs> um, that would be very interesting. Uh, can't forget the Lucas saga or Vecchian. I know. I know. What happened to Lucas was just wild. Like, he was, like, MI, well, not MIA. He was just, like, SM <laughs> hit him for, like, what? How, how long has it been since Lucas's situation? Like, a whole year or something? Oh, I think I'm lagging again. Oh, jeez. Okay, I hope, think, I hope it, it doesn't lag too much. I'm sorry, you all. Um, oh no, am I, oh jeez, I think I'm lagging again. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, you all. Um, Lucas was in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, after Lucas's situation, like, I don't know. And then SM just releases a statement saying, like, he's not, he's no longer part of, uh, NCT, but he's still part of SM, which is weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know SM's tactic. I don't know what they plan to do with NCT, with their new group. I don't know. Okay. Um, you all, I think it is time to read these statements. Um, oh my goodness. If you hear that noise, that is my dog's toys. So if you hear noise or anything in the background, that is my dog. He is a puppy and he's very wild. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry if it keeps freezing you all. Okay. Oh, I don't know why it keeps lagging. Okay. Uh, SM treatment with foreign idols, uh, their idols in general, is atrocious. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why, though. I don't know why SM just can't treat. Ev why can't they treat everyone with respect? I 
I have no idea why I am lagging. Oh my goodness, technology. Okay, I hope it gets better. Okay, how is the stream for you all? Is the audio good? Am I am I lagging too much? EXO deserves uh, better than being treated like that after all these years. Now I understand why Luhan and Tao left long ago. And they literally, and they left for a similar reason, like the whole contract thing. Uh, the XOL people who hate Chen so much needs to get a life because oh, life's too short. Espa. Yes. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why anyone would, would dislike Chen. Chen is a sweetheart. Like I said, the man deserves like the entire world. He is the sweetest human being. And I honestly don't understand how anyone could could hate him he is such a good man um because this is business and what matters is the almighty green mm -hmm. i mean at the end of the day sm is just like any other company it's a business like they got to make money um and i mean i think that's why they have these contracts because they uh they want to make sure that they have their money makers for a long time because I'm sure they don't want to invest in like a group if they're going to leave them um, like three years later to another company and then make that company money. Um, so I'm sure SM is trying to find loopholes to keep these artists, their money makers, for as long as possible. Um, and yeah, as well as Hang, hang Gang. Yep. Um. All right. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Um. Oh my goodness, I'm still having issues with my with my stream. It's it's telling me that it's oh, it's lagging. Oh man, why is it doing this to me? I don't understand why my stream is like this. Uh, we legit seeing a company go down in flames in real time. Um, even if CBX left SM, they will get blacklisted from the Korean entertainment industry, just like what happened to JYJ. That's the thing. I'm hoping that the industry has changed. Um, I'm hoping that SM doesn't have a stronghold in the industry like they used to. Um, like, I'm just hoping that times have changed, but yeah, you need to take good care of your money maker. That's how you run a business, maybe. Mm hmm. Exactly. SM can be, yeah, I'm petty when they, yeah, that's the thing. Like, SM just wants to make sure that they keep their money makers for as long as possible. Um,. Okay, so I under I know I keep talking about how my stream is lagging. I'm really sorry. I'm hoping that it just gets better. I don't know if is it my internet? It can't be. Um I mean, it's crazy seeing how all these uh companies how like a few years ago they were so strong like YG and SM and look at them now. Um, I can't imagine Suju being blacklisted because they decide to leave. I mean, listen, some, some companies are, they're, I don't, I don't know. Some companies are just wild, but, um, but yeah, like it's so crazy to see like a few years ago, YG and SM, there were these powerhouse companies Right. And then Hybe was a, a tiny company. And now. Um, and now look, look at look at YG. <laughs> and and SM is like. Ooh. Um, yeah, Lee Tuck fought their rights. Lee Tuck fought hard like that man fought. 
Um, I hope my bias Chen does not leave EXO, especially Beckyan and Schumann. And EXO is not EXO without Chen, Beckyan, and Dio. Honestly, I don't think Chen is leaving. I don't think Chen is leaving. Um, the fact that um, him, Beckyan, and Schumann um, decided to, um, you know, terminate their contract together, I think it's because they plan on 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 staying together. And also their their statement. Um, which I want to read the statement, but I want to make sure that I'm not lagging and I don't know why my system is lagging. Um, okay. Let me know. Does the lag bother you all too much? Like, I don't know if, if I should do the stream again at a later time or if I should just keep going you all let me know they wouldn't leave the rest of EXO behind yeah that's true that is true okay it says it's an excellent condition I wonder what will happen to Super M now since it seems like both Lucas and Beckian won't be a part of the group I honestly think Super M um I honestly think Super M they're they're just I don't think they're going to be active anytime soon. Um, yeah. Actually, I don't... <laughs> I. <laughs> um, if they all leave, <laughs> they might do it together. I think they will. It's okay. Lagging is not that much. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. You all, if the stream lags or if it's just... If the lag is too much and you can't hear me properly or anything, let me know. Um, yeah. Because I do want to read these statements, but I don't want to be freezing up in the middle of a statement. Um, I think Schumann and Chen were mistreated since the days of XOM. There are rumors that the both of them were forced to promote in China. <sighs> I mean, the fact that this is happening to them and Beckian, and we know that they're not the only ones going through this um and the thing is like they are they're sm's money makers so now you're good okay awesome okay um so let's get to these statements um all right so first statement uh sm um they release a statement in terms of bpm entertainment um, yeah, so they assumed that BPM entertainment was, like, influencing them to, like, leave, which it makes no sense, but, all right, so the statement goes, hello, uh, this is SM Entertainment through the SM 3.0, uh, strategy that we announced at the beginning of this year. The agency presented our new vision as a leading global entertainment company. Thus, while continuing to improve corporate governance accordingly, we are fiercely working hard to meet the high expectations of fans. At this point, um, fans don't really have high expectations of SM. They just expect, um, they just expect regular, <laughs> like we, at this point, we're, we're ex we just need the bare minimum. Like, just, just treat them right and give us comebacks. Like, just the bare minimum. Okay. Um, however, we have detected an external influence taking advantage of the time when we were focusing our abilities to prepare to take a new leap by approaching our artists with false information and delivering wrong legal assessment, making unconventional proposals such as persuading them that it is okay to ignore their exclusive contracts with us and to sign contracts with them. Even though they don't sincerely care about the artists at all, the external influence is committing illegal acts by using false rumors, slander, and flattery to lure artists into making misjudgments, violating their exclusive contracts, and signing additional contracts that would breach the exclus exclusivity of the pre-existing contracts. Um... <laughs> SM is basically saying, like, um... SM don't give a damn even in finding a reasonable reason. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, SM is like, yeah, they're they're being influenced by flattery. This external influence. <laughs> it's so funny. This external influence. They're they're taking them away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, SM. Um, we confirmed that the external force did not only stop at luring, luring, <laughs> I'm so sorry, you all, luring our agency's artists into violating their valid exclusive contracts with us, but they also lured other artists from our company to violate their exclusive contracts or to sign additional contracts through relevant artists. This part is interesting for me. Um... Am I, am I lagging? Oh, geez. Okay. Anyway, um, this part is interesting for me. The fact that they said, um, they also lured other artists from our company. Meaning, I think SM released that just in case if another artist from SM comes out and says, hey, I'm also terminating my contract. So SM could revert back to this statement and be like, we told you they were being influenced. So they're already trying to cover their backs in case another SM artist comes out and tries to terminate their contract. You see what's going on? SM, SM is, is being prepared for other artists to, to terminate their contracts too. Like SM is ready. Like they're trying to cover their backs by blaming this external force. What I want to know is the SM revolution, fun start, and everyone starts suing. I think SM is getting ready for that. That's why they said this external force is trying to lure other artists in our company. SM is, is getting ready for that. Okay, so they continue on to say, these attempts by the external force are clearly illegal, encouraging conflicts between our company and artists, as well as between the artists while also having a hidden agenda of wanting to collapse the existing team. Hidden agenda? <laughs> what? Is this Star Wars? <laughs> okay. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, this attempt cannot be tolerated as it fundamentally destroys the trust of fans who send infinite love and support. And it is an illegal act that cannot be excused for the sound future of the entire K-pop industry. <laughs> SM, calm yourself. Calm yourself for a hot second. The fact that it destroys the trust of fans? No. No. On the contrary. Like, <laughs> what? SM fans don't trust you. <laughs> they trust their your, the artists. <laughs> and that, that cannot, this cannot be excused for the sound future of the entire K-pop industry. SM is trying to be the savior of K-pop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Uh, it's like SM is trying to write a novel. I don't believe a word they write. It does sound like a novel, like hidden agenda, external forces. Like it sounds like Star Wars. <laughs> the future of the entire K-pop industry. We have to protect it. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're betraying the trust of fans. They sound like Darth Vader. I, right? <laughs> They do sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, jeez. The revolution is starting. The rebels. Uh, I mean, that's their whole stick. I mean, yeah. Okay, so they continue on to say, Therefore, we will not stand idle to the movements of those who only pursue monetary greed and do not pay attention in the slightest to essential details, such as the future of our artist. <laughs> SM. SM is saying this. SM. Of all companies, SM. We will not stand idle to the movements of those who only pursue monetary greed and don't pay attention <laughs> in the slightest to essential details, such as the future of our artists. That's rich. That's... Okay, SM. Okay. Whew. Um... Yeah, such as the future of our artist or their legitimate legal rights, and we will take all legal action possible. Okay, SM, honestly, they call themselves out with the greed part. Exactly. Exactly. Um, 
this is because if we do not do that, the reputation and image of our artists could be severely damaged by the actions of those who are only taking care of their own interests as well <laughs> as have a negative impact on the future of promising artists. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, SM, I, ah, geez, they, they're a special company. What can I say? All right, so they conclude the agency will respond strongly to illegal actions by the impure external force, and we will work hard to show how we meet the high expectations of fans who sincerely love the artist. SM, we fans, we don't have high expectations of SM as is. We really, we, we, our expectations are like, just I think with any K-pop company as a fan, my expectations for a K-pop company is really low. Like, just treat your artists right and give us, like, you know, comebacks here and there, you know? Um, like, never a dull moment in the SM universe. Yep. There is no image that is already damaged <laughs> than yours, SM. Yeah. I mean, the only companies that I trust is companies that the artists themselves have founded. So, for instance, Kang Daniels Connect, I have full trust in Connect because it is Kang Daniels' company. And Label SJ because they, they run it. Like, Super Junior runs it. Did they even directly deny that they mistreated their artist in their statement? Because it doesn't even sound like they did. They're just blaming this other company. They are. They are. They're, they're, they, SM will never admit to any wrongdoing. Um, they will not do that. They will blame the artist they will blame another external forces it sounds that even inside sm are not united i mean we saw it with hybe with the whole hybe situation like apparently some employees were against it some employees were for it like and the whole lee suman thing like i i do think that internally um in in the company i think there are divisions or something um I mean, we heard so many different things with SM and Hybe and Lee Suman. It was a lot of he said, she said, and whose side are you on? The employees are banning, are coming together for this. And it, it was, it was kind of confusing. That's why I wish I, I know, I wish I, I knew someone that works in SM and I could be like, listen, what is going on? <laughs> Give me the tea. Like, I want to know. I want to have a conversation with Heechul and Key from Shiny. Heechul from Super Junior. Um, I want to have a conversation with them. I want to be like, tell me, besties, tell me what's going on. It sounds that, yeah. Okay. Um, so they further reported that the same day that SM recently sent a certification of contents to Big Planet Made Entertainment, um, SM claimed that the contents that BPM Entertainment approached Chen Beckin and Schumann to sign contracts with them. Um, as the EXO members signed exclusive contracts with SM Entertainment, signing additional contracts could be a breach, da 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 It's sad to see one of the biggest K-pop groups of all time going through this. This is disrespectful to be a fly on the wall. Yes, it is disrespectful. And yes, I would love to be a fly on the wall. Especially in, like, those, like, meetings. Like, I would just like to be like, what's going on? <laughs> um... Yeah, so Big Planet, um, they respond. They responded to SM's uh, statement, and basically they said that they never met the artists mentioned in the report, and they've never discussed or shared opinions regarding any exclusive contracts. So um, we confirm our agency recently received a certification of contents from SM in the name of their CEO, and we express regret at their intention to link their own internal contract situation with our unrelated agency. If they continue to insist as such, we will take strong legal actions. So um, Big Planet made entertainment. They, um, uh, Big Planet made entertainment. They literally just flat out said, SM's drama is not our drama. We're not involved in this. Don't include us in your dirty little situation. That's essentially what they said. So good for them. I'm happy that they responded back to SM. Um, yeah. Okay. So now SM releases 
detailed statement refuting uh, Becky and Schumann and Chen's basis for contract termination. This is the juicy one, you all. Hold on. I need to drink my coffee real quick. Refuel. If I'm CBX, I'd rather sign a contract uh, to others if my company doesn't care about me. My interest it might be true. Yep. Imagine if you have a conversation with Suho talking about what's going on with us. I'm an exo. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Anthony, you're so right. Suho is the one that obviously really knows what's going on. Um. Yeah. The shade is being thrown and I live. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. But for sure, Suho... Suho knows what's going on. Um, and I know Suho protects EXO with his life. Like he, I trust Suho and I know that, um, I know they, they have, they have everything under control. New contract details. This contract is effective for five years during, however, should fail to, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that, um, to that statement where they do talk about that in a little bit. Um, yeah, their whole contract with the whole album situation thing. SM keeps trying to find loopholes. Okay, so let me continue on with SM statement and then we're going to get to CBX's statement because it's, uh, it is juicy. <laughs> Hold on a second. All right, so SM, um, so, all right, SM shared the following statement, refuting claims from Becky and Schumann and Chen's legal representative. Um, why Espa's come back? I firmly believe, I firmly believe that is what's happening with Espa. The whole um, contract with the album stuff, that is why they're literally giving Espa crumbs. Bro, Suho got blamed this whole time for not protecting the members instead of SM. It's so stupid. No, Suho is playing. Suho is being smart. Suho is being very smart because I know if he were to um, say something, it could ruin everything that's going on because this is a legal thing. So anything that they say has to be very intentional. So Suho is playing the long game. Well, he's not playing any game. Um, Suho is being very careful. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Suho is being very careful. They know what's going on. They know what they're doing and what they're doing is right. So, um, yeah, so whoever's blaming Suho for stuff needs to calm down. They need to learn and at least the basics of how legal things work, because in these situations, you don't want somebody randomly saying, random things that could interfere with what's going on um he's watching what's going on and commenting accordingly suho is smart he knows he knows what's going on they know what's up and yeah okay so has quietly hurt so much right now i know i know i, I i'm pretty sure suho is very hurt with the situation because i'm sure he witnesses this I mean, he obviously, they all witnessed it with um, Luhan and Tao in the beginning. And the fact that this is still happening. But I, I believe that they're, they're, they're in it for the long haul. Like they want to make sure that they're doing things right. Um, so I'm sure Suho doesn't want to say anything that could mess up what's currently going on. Okay, so let's uh, read the SM's statement in in regards to cbx uh hello this is sm entertainment as a legal representative of um baekhyun jongdae and minsook uh claimed the termination of their exclusive contracts today we would like to release our statement on this matter um okay first of all exo is an artist we cherish greatly that's really how they start it. Really? <laughs> okay. As a result, we increased the artist settlement rates twice, even during periods when their ex 
existing exclusive contracts were valid. We have been carrying out their payments for several years with a system in which the artist can check can check the basis for settlements um, at any time and they have not brought up any issues with this process over the years. Even when discussing new contracts with the artists when their existing contracts were expiring, the three artists, uh, Baekhyun, Jongdae, and Minsook, uh, all signed new valid exclusive contracts after carrying out mutually level negotiations and there were no issues with uh, the settlement aspects in that process either. Cherish the lies they tell. I know they use the word cherish as if as if they're they're a family. Um okay. However, the artist's legal representative suddenly started to claim that their newly signed exclusive contracts cannot be accepted. And we, be and we began to hear that there is an external force, again with the external forces, as SM and Cherish in the same sentence. Nope. Unless, unless it's money. SM, Cherish, and money. <laughs> um... Okay, we were very taken aback, but we worked to sign an agreement in order to fully respect the opinions of our valuable artists, but we requested the guarantee of not signing additional contracts that would breach their exclusive contracts. Then the artist's legal representative who initially requested that we sign an agreement changed their attitude, ending negotiations for the agreement and unilaterally notifying us of their contract termination without any explanation of whether there are dual contracts. Oh, geez. Awesome. All right. So number one, transparency of settlement process. Okay. Awesome. Payments carried out every month. Settlement reports available for viewing at any time. Okay. Artists did not raise issues regarding settlements. You sure about that? You sure about that? Although the settlement reports are available for viewing at any time, they are requesting copies for different purposes and are using as reasoning for contract termination. First of all, we will explain in detail that artist's claim of settlement reports not being provided properly is not true at all. We carried out payments twice a year before the amendment of the Popular Culture and Arts and Industry Development Act and every month since after the amendment. Can you believe they used to pay their artists twice a year? You imagine going to your job like you're working and you only get paid twice a year. Oh, and then I saw something about like, um, I think it was like TVXQ or something that they got paid over after one million like dollars in sales or something. They only got paid like 10,000. It was something like that. So crazy. Okay, moving on. Um... We also cooperated so the artists could visit at any time to view the settlement reports and additionally provided expense reports whenever the artists visited and the artists have not raised any issues with the settlement process over the past several years of their exclusive contract periods. However, as mentioned before, we were told that an external influence, external influence, I wish I had sound effects. <laughs> approached our artists spreading false rumors and instigating them, proposing that it is legally okay to ignore our exclusive contracts and sign exclusive contracts with them. Thus, it was a situation where we couldn't help but suspe suspect that a negative intention of the external influence was being was behind the artists raising issues with the settlement or requesting copies of the entire settlement reports. Like, SM... You honestly think these guys that have been in the company, like they grew up in the company, right? Like they would just be magically influenced by an external force telling them lies like, oh no, you can leave SM, terminate your contract. Like you honestly think that's how their brain works, that they could just be easily influenced? I don't think so. Maybe if they were rookies maybe but the fact that like Schumann, Beckian, and Chen they've been in SM for a long time and they've been in the industry for a long time I don't think I don't think anybody could just go up to them and be like hey besties you could just leave no bombastic side eye Pfft. for real um and also 
the they have seen what has happened to previous SM artists that have tried to terminate their contract. Like their own members. Like they they like I, I'm sure they did not take this whole situation lightly. Um, okay. We then explained several times that the artists can view the entirety of the settlement reports, um, which they were already able to view before together with experts such as their legal representative or an accountant and can review them in detail at any time. And we provided sufficient explanation to the artist uh, legal representative that only visiting viewing has been allowed recently due to the concern of unjust provision to external influence or other third parties. Um... Despite this, not only did the artist's legal representative not express the intent to view the settlement reports in the first place, but the legal representative also did not promise to not provide the reports to external parties. Hmm. Without responding at all about the basic question of whether they sign dual contracts with an external party or have carried out negotiations, the legal representative only repeated mechanically that the contracts have to be terminated because we did not provide copies of the settlement reports in quotation marks so i honestly don't know um so sm is saying that they were able to view their settlement reports this whole time like it's it's um it's like open for them to constantly view but then they said that that's not the case sm meant for external influences is the thinking of artists to have what they supposed to have and the right supposed they have um it's the thinking and the stand not external influences yep provision of copies of our artist settlement reports to external parties is an issue that we cannot simply turn a blind eye to for example if the various detailed activities provided as basis for settlement are leaked to external parties the other exo members excluding the three artists, can receive unjust harm. Hence, we Hence, we requested for confirmation on whether or not dual contracts were signed between the artist and external party, but the artist's legal representative did not provide any response on this Ooh, excuse me, and sent an official notice of contract termination right away. <sighs> yes, I'm. Okay, number two. Uh, legitimacy and validity of existing and new exclusive contracts. Um, yeah. Okay. So in this part, they do mention Girls' Generation, which is something. Okay. So contracts based on standard exclusive contracts uh, form for entertainers. Validity and legitimacy of the contract period has been acknowledged by the Supreme Court. In the case of uh, the new exclusive contract signed on December 30th, 2022, they are the contracts completed after discussing the terms in detail with a lawyer from a large law firm assigned by the members. Second, we would like to explain the legitimacy and validity of the existing and new exclusive contracts. We faithfully follow the standard exclusive contracts form for entertainment and uh, enacted <laughs> and uh, recommended by the Fair Trade Commission and the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism. The validity and legitimacy of the contracts were acknowledged by the Supreme Court through a lawsuit filed by former EXO member Huang Zitao. Tao. Uh, on confirming the invalidity of his exclusive contract. Nevertheless, our agency has changed the settlement rate in favor of the artist by signing annexed agreements twice with the EXO members, including the artist. This was a measure to promote mutual growth between our agency and the artists, even though there was no contractual obligation. Um, we would like to emphasize that we ensure our artists receive sufficient assistance and that they can renew their contracts on their own free will after in-depth discussion with our agency. In fact, get ready for this. Um... <laughs> In fact, among our agency's groups, members of Girls' Generation, FX, and so on, signed exclusive contracts with other agencies, and in the case of Girls' Generation in particular, even after three members left for new agencies, they are maintaining good relationships with our agency through album releases and participation in SM Town performances. 
On the other hand, there are also cases where artists signed exclusive contracts with our agency again after careful consideration. For example, many artists such as TVXQ and Super Junior have renewed their contracts with our agency twice. Just hearing that name, I'm bringing back memories, both good and bad. Oh, I know. Um, okay, I think Girls' Generation was a special case scenario, right? I myself am shocked that SM allowed the members that are not signed in SM to participate in their comeback and to be part of SM Town. I was shocked about that, you know? Um, I do see... Uh, yeah, even though Tiffany Soyoung and yeah, Soyoung all left SM, they never had beef. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry. I keep looking at myself in the side and I see myself lagging. Um, yeah, like what happened exactly with Girls' Generation, it was a special case. Um, and it kind of reminds me of 2 p.m. So, uh, some of the members of 2PM are assigned to other agencies. Uh, some of them are not under JYP, but yet for their comeback, they JYP did allow them to, um, they worked with their other companies um, and they were able to make that comeback and those promotions possible. So it is possible to have um, members sign, you know, be part of another agency and still promote with their core group like that is possible we've seen it happen with 2 p.m got seven girls generation um but the thing is like i i never expected sm to actually allow that to happen because sm is very much like if an sm artist leave like the members are not allowed to talk about the member that left. Or I don't know if that was like only a certain time. Like I think times have changed. But um, yeah, SM still recognizes Lay as well. Yes, so I will give... So I do think that SM has been... They have changed in terms of like... In, 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 that, uh, in that aspect... A good working relationship. Yeah. So, I mean, it is possible that um, that people leave and then SM, they do allow them to come back and work with their artists, but it's very rare. So, again, I do think Girls' Generation, um, Girls Generation was a special case scenario. I don't think SM would be, more, would be that kind to any other group. I mean, if you see, I mean, if NCT, if like, let's say members from NCT leave NCT and they decide to promote in a different company, I highly doubt SM would be very forgiving and allow them to promote with NCT um, because there's a lot of things that have to happen behind the scenes to coordinate with the company and with the other companies involved. Um, not going to lie, this is reminding uh I mean, the backlash of Jessica, yeah, getting kicked out of Girls' Generation. Exactly. And SM did not mention Jessica so, <coughs> in their statement. Excuse me. So, yeah. So, I think if, if an artist leaves SM in, like, a good, clean slate, then they will allow them to, you know, come back and, and do activities with other members. Um, like, I think Henry left in, in a good... Um, because they benefit its strategy business. Yeah. So I think like a perfect example, like Lay and Henry, they left, but I think they're still, they have good relationship with SM. So, um, if EXO does have a comeback and if Lay's schedule is good, <laughs> then they could like work out. So, but in terms of, but I think anybody that leaves SM in a, in a, I don't want to say in a bad way, but like if they have beef with SM, then SM will definitely block them. Um, yeah, that's the only way that I see um, like what happened with Girls' Generation. So the the members that did leave, they didn't have beef, as you guys said. But um, yeah, the parting must be beneficial for all parties involved. Yeah. 
So I know with 2 p.m. when the members, um, like Tech, Techian, when he participated in 2 p.m.'s comeback, they had to really organize with his company and with JYP's company. And then you have to deal with the copyright and payments and scheduling, like who gets credit for what, like who's how are we going to split this who's going to take over the cost for this or that and it's very um it's not easy that's why it's a lot easier to promote a group if they're all under the same company because the paycheck goes to one place and you know but when it's several companies it's a lot harder but yeah but i I think SM is forgiving if people leave in a peaceful way, but if they leave with beef, like if they just randomly, like, well, not randomly, but if somebody leaves SM saying like, hey, SM mistreated me, then SM will not be very, they won't let them back in. But, um, but yeah, again, I do think Girls' Generation was a special case scenario. Um, and the fact that they mentioned TVXQ and Super Junior renewing their contracts. I would not be talking about Super Junior if I was SM. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Suju and SM, they had their their issues. Um, and luckily, it resulted in Label SJ, which is the best thing that could have happened to Super Junior. Um because SM didn't even want to give Super Junior a comeback uh, for their 10th anniversary. And that was a whole thing. But, um, but yeah. So, let's move on. Um, in fact, ahead of the expiration of the existing exclusive contracts, the artist signed new co exclusive contracts with the help of a lawyer from a large law firm, after sufficient consultation with us in a situation where renewal of the contracts was not coerced at all. We signed contracts with seven EXO members on December 30th, 2022. After a long discussion with the EXO members for one year and six months from June 2021 to the end of 2022. Um, somehow Pepsi is always mentioned in this what what is pepsi ha oh oh like the the starship and pepsi collab stuff yeah uh sm and suju struggles mm -hmm. i wish i could hear dio and chenyeol's reaction regarding to this situation i agree especially chenyeol i because we know sm has not allowed well chenyeol has been i know chenyeol has been wanting to release music and stuff and sm is like I don't know. I, I don't know. But I would love to hear Chenyeol's point of view in all this. Specifically. Because um, I feel like SM has been holding him back in terms of um, music and stuff. But yeah. Okay. Um, mm, okay. Discussions on contract renewal started at different times for each member because each member had a different military service period. But because we understood the importance of EXO as a team, the members as well as our agency started discussing contract renewals starting with the members whose contracts were to end first. During the process of discussing the contract renewals, a lawyer from a large law firm appointed by the members also joined the discussion from April 2022. And we went through the process of coordinating each party's opinions. In particular, for about a month from mid-November 2022, amendments were exchanged with the members' legal representative a total of eight times, and we completed our discussions as we went over in detail each and every word in the exclusive contracts. Despite the situation, the artist's newly appointed representative suddenly changed their position and insisted that they cannot accept that the new exclusive contracts are valid, which makes us suspect that what we are being informed about is true. Um... Pepsi, Super Junior, and TVXQ together. Oh. Wait, did, did they do a collab for Pepsi? Devil was basically Suju uh, proving to SM they don't need them. It was fully founded and produced by the members during their contract renewal period. Like, yes, give us a separate label or we bounce. That is true. I, I wish, I want people to look at um and, and read into that. Like, Super Junior's Devil comeback. 
I might do a video about it and talk more in depth about it because I think it is very important. Um, it's a very important thing that happened not only in the SM company, but like in K-pop, like the fact that they were able to stand up to the company. And like you said, give us a label or we bounce. So, okay. Finishing up SM statement, our biggest goal is to protect EXO and their fans who show infinite love and support for EXO and to protect all of our agency's artists. To this end, we will take strong action against external forces that try to delude artists with unreasonable financial temptations, flattery, and groundless rumors to collapse the I the team itself. Um, Pepsi logo is blue and red colors. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for explaining that. I thought they had like a, a Starship Pepsi collab or something. Okay, yeah, now I totally see it. Oh my gosh, the Pepsi logo. Yes, Suju and TVXQ. <laughs> That's so smart. I love that. Okay, um, yeah, it's interesting how SM says they're going to take strong action against external forces, right? Um, that try to delude artists with financial temptations, flattery, and groundless rumors. I mean, like, SM, give your artists some credit. They have brains. Like, you honestly think they're just gonna, like, someone's gonna flatter them and be like, you know what, you're right, I deserve, but I should leave SM. Like, no. If they want to leave SM, it's because you have given them a reason to leave. Like, if you really treat your artists right, like, no matter what any external forces offers them, they will not leave if you are treating them right. So, SM, like, if, they, if they're if they leaving, if, they, if anybody wants to leave a company, it's because the company has given them a reason to leave. Yep, you don't even let EXO promote. I know, XOL makes promotions. I know, that's so true. Like, and I mean, it honestly, it's like that with, I feel like, pretty much everything. Okay, now it's time to read CBX's uh, statement, which is, oh, it is the best. Okay, um, let me get a quick coffee break. I have no idea what's happening anymore with K-pop. For me, it's literally burning down. Uh, for me personally, my fave groups have been hit uh, by bad things one after another. And I hate K-pop right now. Huh, period. SM is forcing them out. They deserve all the karma. Um, I mean, look, I got into K-pop in late 2018. So November, December of 2018. And throughout 2019, I've been discovering K-pop. So I like to think I'm still relatively new to K-pop, but there has definitely been a shift in the industry for sure. And especially uh, me doing these throwback series, like looking at B2B's uh, like debut and Big Bang, going through all of their music videos and eras and Super Junior looking from the beginning all the way to now and also watching their documentary. There has been such a change in the industry. And I think it started specifically in 2019. Um, obviously, K-pop has never been perfect. Like, K-pop has, every generation has had their scandals, their issues and stuff. But I feel like now, with technology and just so many things coming to light um, and being exposed, and I think it all started, I think 2019 really, I don't know about you guys, but to me, 2019 definitely, like, pivoted um I've been in K-pop since 2017 yep I got into K-pop in 2019 because of Blackpink oh nice 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 um yeah so like my cousin she's been into K-pop since like 2014 2013 and even she tells me that K-pop has definitely changed SM what I loved about SM because I watch their um New Year concert. I it's been a tradition for me for the last 3 years. I literally watch their SM family concert thing every year and I loved SM for that. I loved that 
they got baby monster on the way which they're debuting minors yg is debuting literal children 13 year olds i i don't agree with that but that's a whole other topic i know they're super talented um but yeah i'll probably talk about baby monster in another another video but the thing that i loved about sm right and i understand you know, all these years, I, I knew SM was not perfect, obviously, but I thought they were better than most companies because, um, because I, I would see their year end concerts, their SM town, and just seeing the, the friendships between the different groups, which there's a lot of K-pop companies that you don't see their artists interacting with each other at all. Um, but with SM, you would see them do collab stages. Um, you would see them perform together. You would see their friendships, like for instance, Shiny with Girls' Generation, with Suju and TVXQ and EXO and NCT, um, and now Espa and, you know, Red Velvet. Like you see the, the family. So the whole pink blood thing, like the fa SM family, I firmly believed in that. And I was, and I, watching their concerts and watching things like that, I was thinking, um, like, you know what? There's no other company that I see this. Like YG used to have the whole YG family thing, but everybody left. And I'm thinking, you know, all these people are still in SM. They love each other. And as a fan, like I feel, I feel reassured that my faves are not going anywhere. And I would assume that after, you know, the, the past mistakes and stuff sm has learned they're treating their artists right and and that's what i loved about sm but seeing them do this with cbx it breaks my heart and i feel i feel betrayed by sm you know because it's like i i invest so much time and even money because i buy the albums in in sm's artists hoping that sm is treating them right and it just, it, it, it hurts me that SM is still doing this. Not only to CBX, but they're probably doing this to other artists too in their company. Um, I love the artist family dynamic that keeps me staying with them. Me too. Lee Suman left SM and everything is falling apart. I mean, to be fair, I think SM has been falling apart even before Lee Suman left. But now I think it's, it's a lot quicker, yeah. By the way, I'm waiting uh, your live stream a week ago, but you didn't. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to do a live stream ooh, last week. I am I am so sorry. Um, I will try to do live streams more often because I, I love just talking to you all. It's such a joy and there's a lot of things to talk about. Uh, SM Town performances are fun and the artists are cool with each other, but the company ain't it. That's the thing. That is the thing. Like, I want to support these groups and artists but i don't want to support the company when lee suman stepped down it went to hell i think the the situations got got worse for sure but sm hasn't hasn't been perfect i've uh, been in k-pop since early 2020 and it's literally not the same as when i found it the industry part of k-pop is uh taking the joy out of k-pop and i know it's always bad but gosh yeah um, yeah, I mean, from 2020 to now, 2023, it, I feel K-pop keeps, it's changing so fast. Um, with the whole slave contract thing, I think Suju contracts have gotten much shorter because, uh, they've had two renewals since 2015. So it feels like they're trying to keep one foot out just in case. Yeah. And I know that Heechul always talks about it. Like Heechul's like, am I staying? Am I going? Yeah. Um, know what these companies try to do after hold on a second after seeing their friends deal with it and they won't stand for it he will let his contract expire and was a freelancer for two whole months before he resigned now yep uh i think what's wrong in sm unfair treatment i would say artists uh in sm are family not sm to the their artist that's true I know SM is just horrible and it's like everything was is a lie. Yeah, that's the thing. That's I feel I feel betrayed. Like I it's like like my expectations were low, but dang, <laughs> like, oh, it just it breaks my heart knowing that like 
my my faves are being treated like this um this is also reminding me of suli of fx oh my gosh yes getting mistreated sm and taking her own oh my gosh oh that breaks my heart which is so sad because of the haters saying so much malicious comments which was is very rude and such big toxicity yes oh my goodness that whole issue breaks my heart and it bothers me that oh my gosh it there's oh my gosh sm sm should have could have been better oh my goodness um but yg said he considers fans yg fam so he begrudgingly includes the remaining two girls into baby mode oh my gosh Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, the artists seem really close and respect each other a lot, but the company is a whole other story. Mm hmm. Um, I just want all the artists to survive this. Yeah, I want them to survive and I want them to thrive. I want them to, to just ugh, be free. Uh, there are no long contracts, but when they extend them, uh, we can't talk about one contract but about another the word family in the sm family now begins to fade clearly and slowly yep i'm sorry to all the sm artist dance ah, yeah it's painful uh since this whole thing starts the toxic fans have come out in droves really i've kind of kept myself away from the twitter discussions in this whole thing but i have seen some People say like, well, my faves, that would never happen to my faves because they're in a perfect company. And it's like, no, 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 no. Calm yourself. Calm yourself down. Um, there's not a single K-pop company that is perfect, first of all. Second of all, you never know what is going on behind the scenes. Your faves could be smiling to you and behind the scenes, they could be getting mistreated by their company and you would never know about it until something like this comes up saying hey they terminate their contract here's here's the receipts of everything that the company has been doing um so yeah i i don't think um i think in this situation every, this is this is not only a cbx situation this is a situation that is not only in the k-pop industry but the music industry as well um i mean artists are constantly being taken advantage of of big companies and it's not right uh, maybe we don't know some artist of the group wants to leave even before or sooner but they didn't because of their love to other members and some artists they know and love yep love hate relationship with sm yeah i know i mean you see these all these albums back here the sm like, I have EXO, I have Super Junior, I have TVXQ, I have Taman, uh, I have NCT. I mean, I got, I do got to get shiny, though. Um, and it's like, like, it, it, it hurts me. You know, like, I want to support my faves, but not when the company is treating them like this. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like... <sighs> yeah so i like i said there's not a single company that is perfect unless um excuse me the artists themselves made that company like for instance beast highlight they made their own company for themselves <laughs> so they are their own bosses um kang daniel with connect so <clears throat> those are the only companies that i think are like great because remember, there was a time that everyone said Jellyfish was the perfect company. Boy, were we fooled. <laughs> oh, geez. <clears throat> okay, so let's read CBX's statement. I read Jessica's uh, books, Shine and Bright, and it talks about a lot juicy drama, but I don't know if it really mentions of bad blood between jessica and tan oh that's a whole other situation um this is why i wish fans could have stock in the, the company oh my gosh for real i swear after uh this girl if exo has a comeback you will still buy their album because me too that's the thing like i'm like full on 
um, collecting EXO albums. That's my thing. So if they do release an album, I will still buy it. Um, Elf bought stock in SM to kick Henry and Shumi and later Sungmin out. Really? I did not know that. Uh, I believe the Rose made their own company, but I'm not sure. Oh my gosh. The whole situation with the Rose. I saw them live in concert. Um, the whole thing that happened with Rose was wild as well. Fans owning stock isn't the best idea either. Um, agreed. They were being petty. Yeah. Okay. We got to read CBX's statement. Because it's a good one. Um, okay. So. They release a new statement with rebuttal of SM's claims. Let's go. All right. So the full statement says, this is lawyer Lee Jae-hak of the law firm Lin representing EXO's member, Baekhyun Shuman and Chen. Um, below, I will share the artist's position regarding the claims made by SM Entertainment on June 1st. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. Number one, SM's claim of an external influence intervention evades the essence, which is the artist just exercising of rights and is additionally false information, merely aiming to mislead public opinion. Um, also, I agree with that. They didn't protect Sungmin when he got married, left him to the... Exactly. Exactly. They did not protect Sungmin. Mm. That broke my heart. Elf gets so overconfident with that stock today to control them and the company li listens for some reason. So I don't know if it's a great idea with K-fans. I don't know. Okay, moving on. The artists feel very distressed after seeing SM's official statement that keeps talking about an external third party. External forces. Um, they feel especially distressed as it seems to clearly show the perspective that SM views the artist with. Yeah. Um, is it a third party influence again? Question mark. Our artists are definitely adults who can think for themselves and take responsibility for their own decisions. And they are individuals with independent thoughts and judgments. Exactly. Exactly. SM's like, they don't got brains. And they're like, yes, we do. We could think for ourselves. Um, they have felt some doubts for a decade, a decade a decade. Wow. And they mustered up fearful and difficult courage with the thought that the questions they couldn't dare bring up as rookies should at least be brought up now. That's true. I mean, there's no way that a rookie would be able to go up a huge company like SM. So <sighs> is the external force in the room right now? I don't Ooh, external forces. <laughs> Uh, okay our artists asked and listened to many people around them about what is right and what they need to do to find wise solutions of those people around them there are listen to this you all family acquaintances seniors and juniors of the music industry colleagues and even staff who have worked together with the artists of those individuals there are those who shared concerns those who shared warm encouragement and those who also expressed their support. In response, we must ask if all of these people are third party influencer influences, malicious influences, harmful influences. Yo, whoever wrote this for CBX, ah, give them an award. This is so good. Like the fact that they said like these quote unquote external forces are family, friends, colleagues, even staff that they've worked with all these years. So is SM basically saying their family and colleagues are external forces? <laughs> so are these are these third party influences malicious or harmful? Like I love how they they worded this. Okay. Our artists are clearly human beings who can make decisions for themselves and take actions for themselves. That's right. The decision, the decision to find their rights, such as requesting settlement data, was made by themselves after a long deliberation and deep thought. And it is definitely not due to the intervention of an external influence. Um, 
Additionally, SM is claiming that our artists have signed or attempted to sign dual contracts, but the three individuals, Becky and Chen and Schumann, have not signed or attempted to sign other exclusive contracts besides their current exclusive contracts signed with SM. SM must refrain from making false claims. They're basically saying, SM, be quiet. As they should. Uh, uh, okay. SM said they would only allow the, quote, viewing of settlement data and not allow provision, and not allow provision, quote, unquote, because of the concern that it would be shared with external parties. However, even if the artists are given the settlement data and receive consultation from not only their legal representative, but also accountants around them or anyone else, this would be just exercising of the artist's rights. Even in their exclusive contracts, there are no regulations that state that the artist cannot show the reports provided to them with anyone else and have to only review them alone. The contracts actually include a clause that the artist can review the data provided to them by SM for 30 days and should make appeals when necessary. Mm-hmm. <sighs> So yeah, SM not even providing settlement data and their legal representative and other celebrities advising them about the injustice of this situation. This inevitably raises the question of who should be criticizing the wrongdoing of who in this situation. Hmm. We would like to state again that the essence and truth of this case is that the artists and their legal representatives have consistently requested the provision of settlement data, but SM eventually refused which has led to contract termination. So basically, SM is saying like, yes, we have allowed them to view their settlement data and CBX is saying, no, they haven't. Okay, number two. <clears throat> According to their exclusive contracts, their settlement reports should be provided. So only allowing them to be viewed cannot be seen as the obligation being fulfilled. The premise of SM's claims is that allowing the viewing of the settlement reports is fulfilling SM's obligation. However, according to their exclusive contracts, it is contracted that their settlement reports should be provided. Therefore, only allowing the reports to be viewed cannot be seen as the obligation being fulfilled. Article 14, paragraph 5 of the exclusive contract signed between SM and the artist regulates... Along with each settlement payment, A, SM, must provide the settlement report to B, artist. B can file appeals for 30 days since the data that the settlement report is received for reasons such as if the deducted costs have been overcalculated or if B's income has been undercalculated. And A must faithfully provide the basis for settlement. Therefore, the data must be provided and not just available for viewing. And the 30-day appeal period is also measured from the day that the report is received. It is not measured from the day the report is viewed. Interesting. In addition, SM and the artist signed an additional agreement around 2014. And Article 4 regulates a... Prov a provides the basis for settlement noted in Article 2 and Article 4, along with the pay along with each payment, Paragraph 1. And according to the exclusive contract, A must provide a detailed settlement report once every year in June, and B can request an explanation about this form A, Paragraph 2. This also regulates that the detailed settlement reports must be provided. You all, I wish I could just, like, read their contracts. Like, I wish I could just have a copy of it and just read it. Um... This whole SM CBX situation is reminding me of a SM with hype situation, right? That's it's a lot of he said, she said. I mean, it, it really is like I honestly thought the whole SM hype, that would be the biggest drama that we would get from SM this year. But I was wrong. And I feel like this is only the start. <laughs> this is only the start. OK, anyway. When it comes to the artist's right to know and 
Protection of their property rights, there is a major difference between providing data, data and allowing data to be viewed to the point that it is difficult to compare them, especially as settlement reports are data within SM owned territory. We want to ask in return if the accuracy of the data can be confirmed by simply telling the artist to come view them. Also, Article 14, Paragraph 5 of their exclusive contracts grants a 30-day review, excuse me, period from the day that the reports are received and the exclusive contracts state that the artist should review the data sufficiently for 30 days and file appeals if necessary. It is contracted that the settlement reports can be reviewed thoroughly for 30 days, but telling the artist to just come and see them and go is merely building justification for SM's claim. That's true. Um, anyway, we did show you the data. So you haven't redone our duty. Because, and because we were able to speculate this kind of intention from SM, we especially couldn't give up on being provided with the reports and, com and compromise by agreeing for just viewing them. For reasons like this, the Fair Trade Commission standard exclusive contract form for entertainers also states, when requested by B, A should provide B with the settlement report along with the payment regulating that it should be provided. Fundamentally, continuously bringing up the enroachment of confidential business information and refusing to provide data when artists ask to receive reports about the results of their activities does not justify the act of breaching exclusive contracts. Whew. I'm telling you, I wish I had a copy of their contract. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. There's toxic. Okay, that's not. Okay, what? Sending protest trucks for Jumi? Excuse me? What? Toxic elves? Those are not even elves. Uh-uh. If somebody sends a truck protesting for, Ch for Chumi and his comeback, those are not elves. Those are just toxic people. They're not elves. Uh-uh. I don't know why, but it feels like more than any company, SM really lets fans steamroll their artists. Uh, SM treatment is garbage. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like out of any company, um, SM has been very, very interesting lately. <laughs> yes, this is happening currently right now. Yeah, because Anhyuk and Chumi collab. So Sea Elves sent a truck today. Oh my gosh, that reminded me of the other day. Uh, apparently, um, there were also people protesting about Chenyol or something? No. Those people are not elves. Anybody that protests against another member of a group, they're not they're not fans. They're not fans. Period. Hijo came out to support them at music show today looking mad as hell. As he should. As he should. Yes. How could people mm. <laughs> That gets me so mad. Before this there were uh, trucks protesting to kick Chen and Chenyeol out of EXO. Like, this is so stupid. They did nothing wrong. I agree. Right? I haven't heard of such trucks being sent um, at other companies like this. SM didn't even pr protect Chen. They always protesting to kick him out. You know what? Those people, they're not real fans. They're not. Period. I don't give a crap how long they say that they're fans. They're not fans if they protest against another member. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. No. So those elves that are sending protest trucks to, to Chumi, they're not fans. They are not, they do not deserve to be called elves. No. Like, if Suju is supporting Chumi, like, elves should be supporting him too. Same for Chenyol and Chen. How dare these people call themselves XOLs if they're protesting against Chen and Chenyeol. How dare that? How dare they? They, sh they should not be called XOLs. They're not XOLs. They're just haters. Uh-uh. 
Chen and Chen y'all are at like they are the core of EXO like no as I'm getting sympathy from people who hate EXO but EXO gets loved and much respected from EXOL yep man things like this things like that bother me Chen and Chen y'all have been nothing but good like they have been so good I'm getting that SJM reunion and I'm living for it. Yes. And also he he performed in their in their show, right? In their super show. I can't believe, I cannot believe that there are actual people protesting these things. Like, do they have nothing better to do? Besties. Like, there's there's bigger evil in the world. Like, there's other situations we should be coming together for. For instance, SM. <laughs> like. Like, I, I, I can't believe that there's people that are actually wasting their time sending these protest trucks. About Chen, Chen Yul, Chumi. They are wasting their damn time. Uh-uh. People like that should not, are not, in my eyes, they're not elves. They're not XOLs. People that send protest trucks to other members? Uh-uh. No. Absolutely not. Not in my book. They're just haters. They have nothing to... They, they are just probably bored people. Jeez. Right? Like, they think the members are gonna pick a fan. <laughs> a literal stranger over their friend and family they've known 20 years and grown up together. Yep. They need to go touch grass. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, Chumi said the members suggested the idea of... Uh, perfect to him and he was really touched yeah of the performance yep the reason why I love Chen so much as my bias is because one his visuals omg <laughs> yeah <laughs> like so he is so cute and hot yes oh, I love Chen and two his vocals like oh it's so angelic uh, to me oh um, his vocals are so beautiful so beautiful um, thinking that there are people want to kick Chen Yul and Chen, I'm so stressed, and I just want them to kick in there. Yeah, I, I cannot believe that there's like, it, it that that bothers me. That, oh, uh, the only wait, whoa, 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 wait, did I miss something? Okay, yeah. So, I just. But yeah, like you said, like the members will choose their friends that they actually know in person that they've been friends with for over 20 years rather than some random person, right, that sends a protest truck that they just have a problem with this member. Like, l like, no, no. Mm -mm. Real fans support the group, right? Like, I just, oh, gosh. Mm -mm. Listen, those people that send protest trucks, they do need to, they got to touch some grass. They should, you know, meditate, probably go to therapy or something because no, those people are not real fans. Absolutely not. The only trucks uh, that should be sent are trucks that are against mistreatment of artists. They don't deserve it, right? They should be spending their money and time doing that instead. That's the company's fault as well. Yeah. The parasocial relationship promoter. Yep. You want to kick Chen Yul? Feels like you kicking a pyramid, I swear. Yep. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Like, why Why isn't the company doing anything? Unless, unless SM looks at this and they're like, you know what? Whether it's good press or bad press, it's still press. Like, good publicity or bad publicity, it's still publicity. So unless SM looks at it like that, which is very messed up, like, they should just put a stop to it, like, I mean, people have, like, the freedom to, obviously, to protest and share their thoughts and things. So, I mean, there's that, you know. But I, I do think SM should release a statement saying, like, listen, if you got an issue with our artist, keep your comments to yourself. But, I mean, there is freedom of speech. So, I don't think SM could, could do anything about it, per se. But I think they definitely could have handled the situation, especially with Chen when he got married. I think SM should have handled that situation way better um this just like um 
Just like with Monster X and Wanho, that whole situation. Oh, gosh, Starship. Like, listen, I don't know who who works in the publicity office and the company's PR, but they need better PR teams. Like, especially, like, I'm just thinking back to when Wanho um, was kicked out of Monster X and Starship, and Mon Bebe's were fighting every single day for almost a year about that like I think fans have definitely gotten stronger and companies do need to protect their artists but yeah uh going back to the the haters ugh, I I just I do hope that like Chen, Chenyol, and Chumi because they've been in the industry for a while like they don't take these things personally um I hope that they're like you know what you hate me because I'm beautiful. Like, I hope they have that type of mindset. And I do think that they have a very solid support team around them. Um, because I know it's very important to to protect, like, their mental health, you know, their well-being. And I wish that, you know, these things don't don't get to them. Ugh, Starship still don't forgive what they did to Wano. My respect for Starship went down after that. <clears throat> As well as Boyfriend back in the day. I've heard about Boyfriend. I've heard about it. I don't know the details, but I've heard about it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> every time I think there's a good K-pop company, like, I think, you know what? They're, they're pretty good. Something happens. And it's like the artist is going through this terrible situation and the company is like, nah, not my problem. Sorry. Like, I hate that. Starship mistreatment of boyfriend. Yeah. Um, yeah, I lost respect for Starship. <laughs> Management-wise. Mm -hmm. Also, also what happened to BAP? Saying my respect for RBW down the drain. Yep. Yep. Uh, RBW, Jellyfish, Cube. Oh my gosh, don't not get me started with Cube. Um, but I think one of the, the worst things that happened to a group was definitely BAP in my opinion they they were so promising and what the company did to and not only them but the their other group their other group look into boyfriend for a throwback series you'll love them I will I think I have heard a couple of their songs I think at this point with social media and all it's much harder for companies to control their artists and trap them in contracts yep they know their image is their power and they really can just go off on their own if they're popular enough. That's true. That's true. I mean, if you have a steady following, like, look, fans don't follow companies. They follow groups and artists. Now, with that being said, I do know that there are company stands that regardless of what group a company debuts, those people will stand that group regardless on who they debut, which is kind of weird to me. Like, I think you should at least listen to the music first, learn more about the group first before saying that you're a stan. But that's a whole other <laughs> story. Like, be a stan of groups and artists. Don't be a company stan. Yes, BAP deserved better as well as M Black. Yep. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So I think that's why the only companies that I truly trust is companies founded by the artist. Again, Kang Daniel, Connect, I trust them. I love his team. Um, and Highlight, Beast, Highlight, I love that for them. BAP got screwed so bad. And the thing that, oh, it just, oh, the fact that they could have, they could have been so huge. And it's like the company just, the company ruins it themselves. Like, it's just, ah. Anyway. But like I said, um, there are good companies like Connect. <laughs> I know I keep saying Connect. <laughs> Listen, I think I think Kang Daniel's company is fantastic. Um, uh, right, and people who stand trainees so brag they've stand someone since they were a trainee without. How do you find them? Right? How do you find this random teenager? Right? People that stand trainees. I don't know. If they were in a survival program, I would understand that. 
um, like Produce 101 or something, but like a random teenager that's like been in the dungeon for all these years? <laughs> like, how do you, yeah, how do you find them? Uh, YG also needs to protest uh, Jenny because yet to this day, she is still receiving a lot of hate for no reason. Like, I don't know why people love to hate her and she's my bias in Blackpink and Rosé. That's true. YG, YG is like, they, they're just... I don't know. YG's always like, meh, not my problem. SM, adjective, liar, no power, trophy, fabricator. <laughs> uh, I have been saying this for so long, but true, good fans should, should be managing the artists because uh, the companies are not doing it right. But sometimes, honestly, I can see these stars living their lives stress-free out of spotlight. I'd rather them leave and keep their peace and go through all this drama i agree i agree i agree with that i think it is much better to if the industry is so toxic and it's really affecting your mental and physical health you sh you need to get out of that not only in the music industry but i think this goes for anyone if you're in a job that is very toxic and it's affecting your mental health your physical health and it's affecting how you view life and it's really getting you in a very dark place it's best to drop it and leave find something else protect yourself like I don't think any career is worth you ruining your peace of mind and your health and it it breaks my heart seeing people go through a very toxic situation a toxic thing for a career or something when honestly the best thing you should do is step back and protect yourself first um and yeah, BAP and Black Boyfriend, Cross Jean. Oh, Cross Jean. Oh my gosh. Yes. Had so much potential. But due to company mismanagement, they prog uh, they progressed squish. And Everglow. You all, where's Everglow? Their debut was so strong. What happened to them? Yeah. Unrelated, but please react to the Chumi Unhyuk collab when you get the time. I will. I will. After this live stream, I will be watching it. I tried watching it. I wanted to watch it yesterday, but my I was very busy yesterday. But I will get around to Chumi and Unhyuk. Okay, guys. We got to finish this uh, <laughs> statement. So now we're in the, the third part of CBX's statement. Uh, the artist and their legal representative have consistently requested the provision of settlement reports, the fact that SM eventually refused to do so, and led us to notify the termination of the exclusive contracts is the key point of this case. Um, like with Sungmin coming back on his own terms and he's living life with his wife and doing his YouTube. I love that for Sungmin. Honestly, yes. Sungmin is chilling. Like he, he released his Trot song. He's doing content with his wife. Like, I love that for him. I'm so glad Twice does not have beef with JYP and they're in a good relationship with no problems at all because of their renewal contracts. Yeah, I was I was shocked that uh, Twice renewed with JYP. I mean, and I thought they were being overworked, but... And also 17 with Pledis. I was shocked. All the members re-signed with Pledis. Considering what happened with Newest, which that got me really mad. That got me really mad what happened with Newest. Um, and please do the other company, especially SM, if your artist is in the midst of accusation and trouble, uh, other than please protect, guide them and speak for them. Yep. I feel like it's a bit difficult as an artist because you have no real work experience or maybe even completed education. So stepping back from the limelight and trying to find, uh, stepping can be hard. They may feel it's easier to just keep trying to make it work for no matter what. I mean, yes. And you see, for example, Vanner. Vanner, they had part-time jobs, you know, while still being a group because their company had like financial situations and they weren't popular and stuff. And it, I mean, it's not easy when, especially if they've been, if people have been training since they were kids, right? Like I know Suju, they, they were training since they were like in middle school and high school. And this is all you know. Um... I feel like the only decent company is KQ, ATs, and Dreamcatcher's company, formerly Happy Face. Oh, I don't know much about Dreamcatcher's company, but I've, I'm really proud of Dreamcatcher. Like, their comebacks have been very solid. And KQ. I don't know about KQ, but I do love ATs and Zykers. They're very solid. And I love their promotions. But Block B was under KQ. 
and block B, to my knowledge, left. So, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I do, I, so going back to my, my point, I do think it's hard for, I agree that it is hard for artists to step back, leave, and, and do a different career. But honestly, it's like that in a way for everyone else in, in different, you know, um, career paths. So for instance, if you studied in the university, like marketing, and then you go into the workforce doing marketing, and that is all you know, right? And then you're so burnt out from like that industry, and you want to look at a different career path, like you're going to have to start from zero. Like you want to go from being a marketer to being a baker, you got to go back to square one, learn how to bake and, you know, find a career there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is hard stepping back from the limelight and, but in the end of the day, people have to prioritize, you know, their health and also their relationship with their friends and their families. Like you don't want to burn those relationships for a career either. Um, so I think there has to be a good balance and, you know, but also it could mean, you know, stepping back from a company, not necessarily, you know, the industry, that career. Uh, do you think Red Velvet is drowning? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't believe it's taken them or SM this long to give them a concert, to give them a tour. I think Red Velvet deserves to be treated better. Um, yeah, I feel like SM, again, gives them crumbs. Like as Red Velvet is very talented. I love I love Red Velvet and I think SM should should definitely treat them better. Um Okay. Continuing on with the statement. As mentioned earlier, under the premise that it is sufficient to enable the artist to view the settlement data, SM claims that the artist who had not raised any issues with the data before suddenly requested the provision of settlement data and notified them about the contract termination after appointing their new legal representative. It is the legitimate right of the artist to request settlement reports according to their exclusive contracts, and the artist took action after the legal representative provided legal consultation on their legitimate rights. For SM to claim that the artist suddenly started making claims as soon as their legal representative changed upon the artist's action is no different from telling them to never exercise their legitimate right. Um, and SM treatment of FX. Yep. Uh, I honestly have no idea why all these companies haven't learned from each other's mistakes and become better. Like why? Because they're constantly looking for the new shiny thing. Um, yeah, but in the sense of getting a job with an empty resume, I'd compare it more with a housewife. Ah, I had to look for a job. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, even still being part of like being a singer in this industry, like you still learn a lot of things. You learn how to network, you know, you learn how to present yourself, do presentations. Like there's a lot of skills that you could kind of transfer to other careers. Uh, the first time after 30 and why many women get trapped in marriages due to that being so difficult. Mm. Who are your top uh, fave K-pop groups? Mine is Blackpink, Twice, New Jeans, Espa, Red Velvet, La Seraphim, Itzy, Girls' Generation, and of course EXO. Ooh, Anthony, you got taste, my friend. You got good taste. That's some good groups. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you all my, my fave K-pop groups <laughs> once I, I'm, I'm done with this statement. Um, okay. Okay, I see that I'm lagging. Okay, hopefully it's not too bad. All right. Above all, claiming that the artists are being swayed by someone to demand the provision of settlement reports is an act of ignoring the artist's high level of awareness of rights and insights in the negotiation process. We confirm the artist's high level of awareness of rights and insights on the realization of their right to know. And just as the records of our request through certifications of contents remain objectively, the artist and their legal representative consistently requested the provision of the settlement reports from the beginning. Then SM maintained their position that only viewing the settlement data uh, should be enough. However, as you saw earlier, SM's claim is not in line with the exclusive contracts, which is why we could not accept their claim. And since the gap between the party's position and could not be reduced in the end, the artist and their legal representative decided to terminate the exclusive contracts according to the precedent. 
To restate the precedent, an exclusive contract is based on a high degree of trust. Thus, if the agency does not fulfill its obligation to provide settlement reports, the artist's right to review the settlement of profits and file an objection against the agency are not pro properly guaranteed, resulting in failure to provide settlement reports to be a reason for terminating the exclusive contract. This is how the situation progressed between SM and the artist related to the settlement data so far. However, claiming as if the artist or their legal representative changed their position again and again is far from the truth and it is an act of dis distorting and misleading the key point of this incident. Uh, number four, the problem with excessively long-term exclusive contract period, which is unilaterally unfavorable to artists beyond the maximum reasonable extent. Now, this part is what this is. This is the good part. Let me drink some water. Hold on a second. Um, okay, I hope I'm not lagging too much, you all. Okay. As already addressed in the first press release, the artist previously signed exclusive contracts with SM for tw over 12 to 13 years. Uh, artist just wants transparency and to know their rights, but it's ended to this. So sad. Yep. Okay. Uh, this is far beyond the seven-year contract period determined by the Fair Trade Commission standard exclusive contract form for entertainers and is unilaterally unfavorable to the artist to the degree that exceeds the minimum reasonable extent. SM is trying to claim a contract period of at least 17 to 18 years to the artist respectively by giving them sign and subsequent exclusive contracts again as if the 12 to 13 years of contract period is not enough for them. Mm-hmm. We would like to point out again that the as that the act of signing a subsequent exclusive contract falls under Article 45, Paragraph 1, 6 of the Monopoly Regulation and Fair Trade Act. The act of implementing the transactions by unduly taking advantage of his her position. In other words, we regard that forcing a long term contract period using a subsequent exclusive contract falls separately under compelled provision of economic benefits or imposing disadvantages in the attached table two of the act degree. Whew. With regard to, uh, to this, SM argues that it is unreasonable for the artist who had an attorney from a large law firm as their legal representative at the time of signing the subsequent exclusive contracts to suddenly start claiming that the subsequent exclusive contracts are unfair as soon as their legal representative changed. However, claiming that there is a problem with the act of claiming the objectively unfair contracts to be unjust because they appointed a new legal representative is only obscuring the essence of this issue. According to Article 5, Paragraph 1 of the subsequent exclusive contract, this contract is valid for five years from. However, in case the minimum number of albums stipulated in Article 4, Paragraph 4 is not released within the same period, the contract period will be automatically extended until the condition is fulfilled. There is not even a maximum limit to the length of this automatically extended period. That is wild. That So I do agree that that is what's happening with ESPA. So basically, SM, they can extend the contracts right? Because it depends on the amount of albums that they release. So I think that is why ESPA, they, are, they only have like one comeback a year, right? And like Red Velvet. So, and probably TVXQ with their Korean comebacks because they haven't had a Korean comeback in a while. I can't believe SM SM's doing this. And the fact that it's like there's there's no limit. Anyway, as such, the article stating that the contract period will be automatically extended until the artist fulfilled the condition to release a certain number of albums without even maximum limit is clearly a slave contract. Yep. 
Um, the legal representative is pointing out that this falls under the act of implementing the transaction by unduly taking advantage of his, her position, and the artists are also in agreement. Moreover, it is unjustifiable to try binding the artists by signing subsequent exclusive contracts that state a long-term contract period with no maximum limit when about a year still remains on the existing exclusive contracts. SM also did not pay the artist any down payment for the subsequent exclusive contracts. That's crazy. Becky and Schumann and Chen are seriously considering filing a complaint to the Fair Trade Commission regarding SM's act of signing the existing exclusive contracts with such a long-term contract period as well as the unfair subsequent exclusive contracts. Uh, so you're saying that they make the way for comeback long to make contracts last longer. Exactly. Exactly. And now, you know what? Now I'm wondering... Now I'm wondering, is YG, is YG doing that too? Because why, why are Blackpink's comeback so far apart and Treasure's comebacks too? Is, is SM the only company that does this or are there more companies that use this tactic? I don't know. I don't know, you all. Like, my trust in companies is very, very thin right now. All right, number five regarding future activities with EXO. So this is all the answers that we wanted. They're here. Okay. Our artists are seeking ways to faithfully continue EXO activities together with the other EXO members, even if they terminate their exclusive contracts with SM. So bottom line, EXO is still going to be EXO. Uh... That could be what YG is doing. Who knows, right? Um, all right. In fact, during the process of negotiation with SM, prior to this termination of their exclusive contracts, the artist preemptively proposed ideas to continue EXO activities even if Becky and Chen and Schumann leave SM. Aside from the issue of, resol of resolving the legal relationship with SM, the artists are sincerely and deeply grateful for the great love and support that fans showed to EXO for a long time. No matter how the legal issue gets resolved in the future, they will continue their activities as EXO diligently and wholeheartedly. Wow. Wow. That is is such a great way to end that statement, right? So they say, regardless of what's going on with them and the legal issues with SM, CBX, they're still EXO. They're still EXO. They're still gonna, you know, work with EXO. They're still gonna, you know, try to, they're probably gonna, you know, participate in the comeback if there is a comeback. Um, saying EXO is still EXO despite all this makes me so soft right? That's, that's what makes me so happy. I'm really glad that EXO will still be EXO, but I'm still kind of scared. Yes. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's natural to be scared because we've seen what's happened to other groups in the past and other artists. But the fact that in their mind, they're like, you know what? We're still EXO. And also the fact that Sehun, Sehun posted on Bubble, like, what did he post on Bubble? He said something like, um, um, but I wouldn't put it past them for other groups. Mm, yeah. Listen, I could talk about Blackpink all day, um, and how YG has been treating them. But anyway, um, but yeah, but the fact that, like, Sehun is just, like, our unbothered king, he's like, you all, calm down. Calm down. Life is still good. Like we we got a plan. Like I'm sure the 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 members there they all they all know what's going on. You know, they're all like it's good. It's all good. Like CBX know what they're doing. We know what's going on. And EXO's not going anywhere. The only thing is EXO is probably going to have more freedom now. And they're probably going to be treated way better. <laughs> um yeah. So I, 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 okay. So I'm predicting SM is probably going to re release another statement, um, probably following this because SM needs to have the last word 
like SM will, um, hello and good morning. Hello, Brian. Good morning to you. LOL, Stan Sehun, Sehun, our unbothered king. We love him. Um, yeah, so I do believe SM is probably going to release another statement. They're probably going to say their external forces force them to say this. Their external forces are the ones that are, are, I don't know, messing with their brains. They're clearly not thinking for themselves. Yeah. Uh, EXO should just leave SM. Honestly, I believe, obviously not only EXO, um, playing late, hey, yes. Um, yeah, but not only EXO, but I firmly believe this situation isn't only CBX because of in SM statement, the fact that they said that um, they mentioned that other artists, um, that other companies could be talking to other artists or something that the fact that they mentioned their other artists, I do believe SM is probably preparing themselves in case another artist comes out and wants to terminate their contract too. Um I wouldn't be surprised if that's, if that starts to happen. Um, I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You know what? I'm, I'm going to step back from this and I'm going to play good cop, bad cop. All right. Maybe this issue is only CBX. Maybe. And everyone else in SM is chilling. Everyone else in SM has a good contract. They have good trust with the company. Maybe, maybe. All right. I'm, I'm playing good cop, bad cop. I got to look at it from both sides. So only time will tell. But I do think SM is going to release another statement um, in response to this. What are they going to say? I don't know. Um, deep down inside, I wish I could trust SM and and say, you know what? They're treating, they're treating all their artists right, and you know things things aren't as bad as it is. But because the fact that this has been going on for a long time in SM, it's not um, the first time that's what concerns me. Like if, if this was a one-time situation, like if this had never happened before in SM, the whole contract, you know, situation thing, then I would be like, you know what? All their artists are being treated right. It's only CBX. But the fact that this is a pattern that, ha that it happens, again, TVXQ, it happened with Super Junior. Um... I don't think Shiny, I know Shiny has been overworked and EXO when they debuted, like that's already, and that's only the boy groups, you know? So it's a pattern and it's like, I, I want to give SM the benefit of the doubt. Like SM, I love your groups. I don't want to hate you. I want to support you. I'm rooting for you. I want to root for you, but you're not giving me a reason to root for you. You're really not like every time you break my trust. Like I I want to support you, but I just I I can't. You know, like and it breaks my heart. Um glad Chen, Becky and Schumann is not leaving and I should not have unliked their songs on Spotify in the first place because of what happened. <laughs> oh no, Anthony. Like even I there's an, I cannot stop listening to CBX or EXO. Like, despite the beef with SM, I, I, I gotta listen to their music. I love it so much. SM lost 2008 and one that, uh, why you don't mess with up, why don't, why, why don't mess up with EXO? Well, that's why I stand EXO more, however than, uh, I first listened to their comeback. Yep. We gotta wait and see and let the chips fall. That's the thing. We gotta, we just, we got to see what happens. Um, we got to see how this develops because this is a very interesting situation. And, you know, CBX, they're a very, um, very well-established trio. And EXO is a very well-established group. And everyone's looking forward to their comeback. And this is a very public situation. And, you know, the things that SM is accusing CBX and CBX is accusing of uh, SM of doing. It's very, it's a very public thing. So we just got to see how they, how this develops. Uh, who and what are the external forces? <laughs> this isn't uh, exoplanet with a red force. This really SM is playing into exo, <laughs> exo is a little too hard. Yeah, no, I mean, 
the external forces, quote unquote, their family, friends, colleagues, you know, oh, and apparently this invisible third party, like, and the fact that, you know, the company that they thought was influencing CBX came out with a statement that's like, this, if we're not involved in this situation, don't, don't involve us in this. We have nothing to do with this. Um, also, I saw your last stream and it was fun listening to you talk about XOCBX. Oh, wait, no, I'm lagging. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I think it's lagging. Oh, no. Uh, and precisely if they do it to XO or CBX, who has been their moneymaker now. To others, mm-hmm. So knows the tide is shifting. Small concessions, letting Espa collab with other artists in the media, letting them openly disclose their concepts and have their own. Yep. Uh, artists bottled up their grievances and de deferred out of fear, respect to these human. Now that he's gone, artists are testing the waters of fighting for power. Yep. Oh my gosh, I think, hold on a second. Why is this going on? Oh no. Oh no. Can you all see me? Why is it like this? No. Oh no. Am I frozen? Hold on a second. Also, my first time seeing you as well after listening to your live stream, and I agreed about the statement for CBX. Oh, thank you. I don't know if you guys could see me. Oh my gosh. Oh dear. Oh dear. Am I frozen? I think I am. Am I frozen? Can you guys see me? Can you all see me? Because in my screen, it looks like I'm frozen, but I don't know. Can you all let me know? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be, I'll be wrapping it up soon. Like here in my phone, you're not frozen and not lagging. You're buffering. Yeah, right. So in my screen, it looks like I am buffering, but here I'm, I'm fine. Oh dear. I'm sorry, you all. I'm really sorry. Um, you're fine, but you do keep lagging. Ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to fix the lag, um, in, in my next stream. I'm really sorry about that, you all. Um, oh, man. There's there's so much. Um, can still hear you, though. Okay, that's good. At least you could hear me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna uh, fix the whole lag situation in the next stream. I do apologize for that. Um, and yeah, so I think I will be, excuse me, I think I will be wrapping it up here. Um, this stream has been going on for quite a while now. Um, in my case, you were cut. Oh, okay. Uh, they said there's rumors that it's, uh, Girls' Generation, Taeyeon, and Hyo, Exo, Dio, and Kai Shiny, Taemin, are leaving as a company. I'm not sure. Oh, T. Oh, it's okay. It's not your fault. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Um, you know what? We just got to see what happens. Is this the beginning of the end of SM? Is this only a one-time situation? Um, will CBX be able to be free and still promote with EXO? Is EXO going to be leaving SM? Is SM going to fix their ways? Are they going to support the artist? Are they going to, I don't know, make things better? Are they going to make things worse? How are they going to respond to CBX's uh, statement? I don't know. We got to see. We got to see what happens. Um, SM is a, is a really big, um, 
is a really big company, but their artists are equally just as big, you know? Um, we got to see. We got to see what happens. And only time will tell. Uh, but you know what? I, I have, I feel good about the future. I do think CBX, this, this situation is, um, this situation, even though it's similar to JYJ, but I think the outcome is going to be different. Um, find out next time on war, <laughs> on, on war on SM planet and announce her voice. Find out next time on war on SM planet. 2023, unfortunately, the downfall for K-pop companies. Honestly, it needs to be the 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 rebirth, the birth of good K-pop companies. We got to make sure that there's good companies out there. Um, just keep supporting EXO and EXO. Yes, and EXO CBX. Um, one, remember the video Kai audition and, and other member and try to hear it. I swear, I promise. Oh my gosh, I tweeted about um like their their skit thing that they did of Kai like uh, you know wanting to debut an EXO and the EXO members are like you have to be comfortable with like giving 50% of like your paycheck to us or something like that yeah I retweeted it on on my Twitter but um but yeah uh I so like I said I do think the outcome for CBX is going to be different from JYJ I I don't think they're going to be blacklisted I think um I'm hoping that the industry has changed since then. Um, yeah, it was for Rover promotions. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know what, this is, I mean, I hope that there's like legit change in SM. Like I hope this situation doesn't happen again to anyone else, even though it's been happening, like with every group at this point. Um, but sometimes, you know what, something happens and which causes a change. So a perfect example is Sungi with his um, not getting paid for over 20 years and, and that whole situation with his company and the fact that now they're they're changing up the laws um, when it comes to like minors and, and transparency and, and things like that. So I'm hoping that this is the start of, uh, you know, it's going to be a snowball effect. Like this is the last straw. Like that is it. You know what? We got to change the laws. SM cannot be you know, doing these slave contracts, you know, 17 years in a company, that cannot be happening. Um, I think CBX has uh, much power to be blocked. I agree. Uh, sending good wishes and love to EXO and all SM artists, stands, and K-pop fandoms in general. Yep. I think with this situation, I think all fandoms, not only XOLs and not only, you know, people that stand SM groups, I think this is a K-pop thing in general. I think fans should ask, you know, for more transparency, um, you know, and artists, you know, I think they will be empowered to stand up for themselves. So if CBX could stand up to SM, which is this massive company, you know what? They could do it too. And I think it's the beginning of a very good chapter. I'm hoping this is a, a, a good, you know, pivot in the industry, um, I'm hoping that this will lead to good changes. Um, every time SM promise that things will be fine, dude, there's just breaking the promises. Look, SM, you make uh, NCT Mark having a back pain with his on um, concert. Literally didn't care. About Listen, I think they overwork Mark. Like I, again, I just I I want I want artists to be treated right, treated fairly. Um. Yeah. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up. The revolution is here. Yes. I'm, I'm hoping that this is this is the start of change. K-pop companies need to wake up. Stop. Stop with your shenanigans. You know, treat people right, you know, or else better watch it. Um, yeah. So with all that being said, I'm hoping SM will do better. I'm, I got to give them the, <laughs> the benefit of the doubt. But um. I sure hope so because dang, the industry needs to change. Yeah, the industry needs to change for the better. I'm tired of seeing the industry change for the worse. It needs to pivot and be good, you know, treat people right. I hope SM will wake up this time. Um, this would be their wake up call. I hope so. I hope this is their wake up call. All right. So with all that being said, thank you all so much for joining me. 
Um, next time I will work on the lag. Hopefully it, it won't lag next time and things like that. Um, let me know what time works best for you all. So if you want, you could go back to the live stream and then in the comments, just put, you know, whether um, mornings or evening works for you and what uh, time location and what time works for you all. Um, let me know. So we could chat again. Um, I don't know when the next live stream will be, but I will let you all know in the community post on my channel and probably on Twitter as well. Um, and yeah, and if SM releases another statement, guess what? We'll be back and we'll just talk about it. And we'll see how this develops. Hopefully good things are coming. And yeah, so um, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know it was long. I really appreciate you all for being here. Stay healthy, have a fantastic and wonderful, delightful, delicious meal <laughs> and water and stay healthy and hydrated. Oh, thank you, YouTube, Brian. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Evening, 11 p.m. again in Philippines. Oh, so this was a good time for you all. Um, yeah, so let me know, you know, what time works good for you all. Just comment on the video. Like you could comment on the live stream, but comment on the video. It really works. It really helps me. Um, can't wait for the next combo. Yes. All right, you all. Thank you. Have a wonderful, lovely day, evening, night. Um, and yeah. Uh, wait, what are your favorite K-pop groups since I took? Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Anthony. I <laughs> forgot to answer. Okay, really quickly. My favorite K-pop groups. It's a lot. It's a lot of groups. Obviously, EXO. I love EXO. Baekhyun is one of my ults. Um, Kang Daniel. I know he's a soloist. Love Kang Daniel. CM Blue. I love CM Blue. They're a band. Um, Super Junior. Pentagon. B2B. Um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My mind is blanking. Why is my mind blanking? Um, oh, TXT. Uh, I'm getting into Les Seraphim. Um, Espa. Um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Mamamoo, um, Blackpink, uh, Twice. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There's, there's a lot of groups. NCT Dream. Oh my gosh, I love NCT Dream. Chen is my old bias in EXO. Yes. Oh, I love Chen. Um, oh my gosh. I know by the time I end this live stream, there's going to be a lot, a lot more. <laughs> a lot more groups that I didn't mention. I I love a lot of groups, you all. Like, a lot. Um, I ultimate bias Dio. Yes, Dio. Oh, my gosh. I, I can't wait for his next solo comeback. I have his album somewhere up there. Um, oh, my gosh. His comeback was so beautiful. Okay. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here <laughs> for, like, the 20th time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so in the next live stream, I'll, we could talk more about, like, other groups and, you know, other, other things that's going on, but we'll also keep in touch. We'll also, uh, keep up with the drama, the SM drama. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, 1SATs. Yes. See, I knew I was forgetting. I knew I was forgetting groups. Uh. Chen and Dio. Chenso. I love Chenso. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Uh, adorable. Um, okay, so yeah. So with all that being said, I will be going. Um, thank you again for watching. Thank you for sticking with me and just chatting. Um, I so XO should make their own label. Yep, they really should. Um, Chen and Dio are so cute together. They are. They're a bundle of joy. Okay. With all that being said, have a wonderful day, you all. Have a wonderful day. Um, and I will talk to you all next time. Bye.